Hello everybody and welcome back. This is not a pro gardener here. We are in zone 6B and today it is 54 degrees outside. Partly cloudy and it's got a little breeze blowing. Ooh boy, it's nice, I'm telling you. It's a perfect day to be out in the greenhouse. We're gonna be potting up these tomato transplants here. We're going to specifically talk about these tomato transplants and the breakdown of me planting them in these smaller cells how many weeks I do this, you know, all the all the details about that that I can think of at the moment while we're potting up. And then we're going to be cultivating the in-ground garden. We got some little weeds popping up and I tried to get a little bit of it done last night, but it was just a little too wet out there. So that's something else we got to do today. So we're going to go ahead and start getting these guys potted up and talk to you about the process. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a nursery pot. We got it labeled with initials for the tomato that's in here, which is a Kellogg's breakfast tomato. These guys here, these nursery pots, I was kind of skeptical of all these nursery pots because I've heard of people saying they don't break down, but I tested them last year and they seem to hold up okay. I haven't found any left over in the ground yet. I mean, I dug for them, but I didn't see them, so I assume they broke down like, this, like was advertised. So this is one way that we're going this year because I, me personally, I hate all the plastic. I try not to contribute to that, and I try to save cups from the year before in case I need extras. But these nursery pots, they hold more dirt than the red solo cups that I was using previously. And that gives them a lot more room to pick up a bigger root system and grow. And they can get quite a bit bigger in these pots. And not to say they can't get bigger in a small amount of soil because I'm gonna show you in a minute one of these plugs out of these trays. And that's going to be an example of how big they can get. So I'm gonna go over here and pick one of these out and show you what I'm working with here because in these trays, let me show you. These trays, you see how small these cells are? This is my finger in comparison to this. That's how small they are. You don't need a huge footprint to grow tomato transplants in. And as I was saying, guys, that is a 231 seed cell tray of tomato plants. That's a lot of tomato plants. And the reason why I do so many is because some seeds may not come up. You know, some of them might get bit back by the frost on accident. I love to have extras because there was a year that my whole tomato patch got taken out early by something. I don't know what exactly it was. If it's something funky going on there, but I had plenty of extras to fill in the holes at no extra cost to me because I was just using the rest of the seed packets to, you know, fill these trays. But if you can see here how big this plug is, there's no root wrapping. All the roots are running straight down. And at the bottom, no root wrapping. This is pretty much the size double the size of what I potted them up last year because they've been in there for about six weeks or so. They're not too bad. They've been in there for about eight weeks now since I transplanted all these up behind me here. I did all these and now it's almost about eight weeks and they're still growing, getting bigger, but they don't need a ton of dirt to get overgrown too quickly on you. And if they get too much bigger, it's going to be hard to put them in these pots. So... Whenever they get this big, if you're having the same problem, you just want to die back the fertilizer you've been feeding them. You want to let them dry out just a little bit, not too much, but you need to just quit pumping the food, the water to them just to keep them, you know, you just need to keep them by, get them by. That's all you got to do. You don't have to keep pushing the water to them. Just give them what they need and not anymore. Because what I would do is I would fill these bottom trays up, let them fully get soaked and then empty the tray, obviously and doing that with a spoon feeding method of fertilizer to them has got them quite quite large which nobody's going to complain about that that's the reason why i do it because they get pretty big this way so 
first four weeks indoors and on that third week of those four weeks indoors i start to acclimate them to the outdoors and then the fifth to sixth week i try to get them potted up okay and these just happen to grow way faster than they did that last year so this is pretty much what i'm working with now there are some of them that got shaded out so they're not as big as this one but this is the potential of using a small tray tons of tomato transplants and one footprint let's see that's okay so this tray here is 21 inches by 12 inches and i can get 231 tomato transplants if they all come up out of one of these seed cell trays so i pretty much do one seed packet and then put a marker and then go on and just do the whole seed packet and i usually buy good seeds so i don't have to put more than one seed in each cell because then you got to thin them out and that's more work if you're gonna spend the time on this you might as well get some good seeds and tomato seeds are usually pretty decent part in most places that you go to get them but four weeks out there and it should be four weeks in here i could leave them in this tray and then it's time to get them out then you want to work on getting them out of the tray and into these pots so we're going to show you the process that's pretty much it and i've had these stay if usually the ones i don't use stay in here and i usually pick the best ones so we're going to pick the best ones that we like and we're going to show you how we pot them up and then we're going to pot them up and then we're just going to take you on a tour and show you what we got around and that's pretty much it for that we just want to show you where they came from how we did it and what we're going to do with them to get them in these pots and then we leave them in this greenhouse last night it got down to 36 or 35 degrees and the greenhouse stayed 45 or so degrees last night and everything was fine i've worked this system out this is like the third year i've been doing this and it's been working pretty good for my zone my climate and with this this aquarium heater over here it does the it does the job about the first two hours in the morning if i don't open this greenhouse it's going to get hot so you want to make sure you come out here and check on them every night and morning and if you have a suspicion you better go check on them anyway because if you got this many plants it'd be a huge loss if you don't take that time out to triple check something so as you can see today in the greenhouse 67 degrees as you can see today it's 67 degrees in here that's why i have this opened up here and the wind is just going straight through which is one of the reasons why i left that side not framed in no door or window or anything i left it like this so i could add another table on that side and then i could just continue that plastic over to the hoops as you see now and then i could just clamp it to the hoops i've done that before and then this is just a tunnel that keeps the rain off of them so i don't get as many diseases on the leaves and that's pretty much it okay so as you can see this is an 18 gallon tote this is the vessel i use to water what i put in my nursery pots okay so this is not seed starting mix this is my homemade nursery mix and i don't know what everybody else does but this is just what i've been doing i put some perlite in there to help keep a light and fluffy mix with some i do three parts of this peat moss and then i do one part of perlite and one part of vermiculite that's just to kind of help it just be rather better than just peat moss it'll help keep it perlite will help keep some air in there for them roots a little fluffiness and the vermiculite will help hold nutrients and water and stuff like that so the main thing is is you don't want this to be a real expensive mix because people are going to be putting these in the ground anyway so in my experience this is as far as I've had experience going with this. If anybody else knows anything better, I would love to hear about it. You can leave it in the comments below. So I water this down. Most people do not like to do this because it's messy, but peat moss is very hydrophobic. It keeps water out, but sometimes it just takes a while to get it in there. So the best way that I've found is to get it in here Put about two, two gallons of water in here or so mix it up a couple times and then keep spraying water in until i feel like it has enough water in there 
And if you don't have enough water in, you can tell. But if you have more than enough water in, it'll start to float because it's so hydrophobic, all that water will go to the bottom. So the more you mix it up and you let it sit so you can come out here ahead of time, I usually do it the day before, water it real good, let it sit overnight, come out here and mix it, and it's usually soaked up pretty decent. So we're going to go ahead and get some of these pots in here. Get them filled up. And this is just something I like to do is getting dirty is not that big of a deal. It's part of gardening, so... This also helps with the first watering because if it's if this stuff is dry and you try to water it, it's going to repel that water and give you a little trouble and you might spend more time on it than you want to. But me doing it at night beforehand, not a big deal. So I got this guy here all filled up. Quite a bit of room here for a tomato transplant. Plenty of size. The water runs through it. The air gets to the roots. It's a not too bad. I, I enjoyed using these last year, so I'm doing them again. So, And if you watched one of my last videos, the last time I transplanted my tomato plants, some of these I did cut down them with scissors to get rid of this as much of a, get rid of, to get rid of this netting, to get rid of this nursery pot as much as possible because I was kind of skeptical about it, but I don't think I'll need to do that this year. So if anybody's skeptical, they can just take scissors and cut as much of this can't as they want to off of it. And that will kind of help ease any problems you might have or ease your conscience on that. So this is what we got here. We're going to go ahead and set a bunch of these over here and then show you how we pot up. This is what we're going to do. We have our pot here. Let me take you in a little closer. And this is what we got here. We got our tomato transplants. And if they're big enough, you should be able to just slightly tug on them and they just come out of there. Pretty much like that. Let me get you closer, you can see that. Nice, beautiful tomato transplant. No root wrapping. Roots growing straight down, which is part of the tray's growing thing that they got in there. There's like lines going down the inside of the trays. Not looking too bad. So the idea is to plant a half to three quarters of the plant down into this pot. So this is what I'm talking about. I want to get this in here at least a half to three quarters of this plant deep because all these little hairs on here, there's little hairs up this stem they will sprout out roots and it'll make a bigger root system a lot faster and then they'll really start to take off once they get established in these pots so usually i transplant this in here i usually let them grow in the greenhouse for about a week and regulate the temperature in the greenhouse to about 70 degrees if possible but in those cold nights it has been pretty good with having all this potted up with water in the trays filled up and there's plenty of moisture in the soil insulating the roots on these tomato plants and I have not had any trouble if it does get below freezing I pretty much just cover this greenhouse with a couple extra tarps and then hang one inside like a hammock almost and tie it on each corner and that kind of keeps the heat trapped in so there are ways to do this earlier this is just the time that I got to get these guys potted up I just happened to have time to do it, so this is how how far along they got. They're about eight weeks old now, and that's not a big deal. I just take this marker, just take this marker, shove it all the way down in there, and then I just rotate it around in a circle till I get a big enough hole for that transplant, which is why I pre-moisten the soil. Otherwise, it wouldn't do this. It would just crumble back into itself, so just roll it around till you get a big enough hole for that transplant. And I'll try to do this so you can see it. This transplant should just drop down in there. And be careful when you're slightly pushing it down in there so you don't break it off. And that's pretty much it. Not quite all the way down there, but it's pretty close and I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill this in a little bit. What I like to do is hold this guy upright like this. 
what I like to do is hold this guy upright like this and then just kind of crumble that dirt in around it a little bit and then slightly pack the outside edges around this tomato plant just to get a good pack around it to hold it upright otherwise it'll just flop around then what we're going to do is put a little soil on there and that'll be it give it another little slight packing and there is this tomato transplant beautiful transplant perfect example right here this one worked out really well the only problem is if you do not have this seeds this uh if you do not have this soil mix moist all the way through you'll have trouble making that hole and that gives you a headache so this is it this is exactly what it needed to be as you can see the water's already coming out the bottom on my hand it's very very nice little pot so and if you get too much water in these trays i'm about to show you over here all you got to do is just lift them up and dump them out and they soak up a lot of water fast once these guys get established they soak up a ton of water so you got to keep them fed so as you can see here we're going to be filling this whole tray up with tomatoes let me take you up a little bit so as you can see here, we're going to fill this whole tray up with tomatoes. And that's the beauty of it. That size right there, that transplant is pretty much perfect for these pots. And I know I'm going to be potting these guys up sooner or later. And that's the beauty of that, guys, is I know I'm going to be potting these guys up sooner or later. So I do this very small transplant trays like I showed you. I do these small trays, inch by inch, about an inch and a half tall. Not very much soil goes into these. So it's very cost effective to grow a ton of transplants. And you also have that insurance if something happens, you have extras. That's a big one for me. They go in the tray, they go in these pots, and then they sit in the greenhouse for a week, and then they are ready for sale. They could sit in here. I've had them sit in the greenhouse for about six to eight weeks before, and that's been a long time. And they get pretty big, but... If you're going to let know they're going to sit in here for a long time, you can kind of just barely give them enough water and fertilizer to keep them looking good and happy. You give them too much and they're going to get huge on you. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done. And then we're going to go check out the in-ground garden and do some of that today as well. So let's get to it. see what we got see now this is when I like to cultivate is whenever you see these dry cracks starting to form but it still feels like it's wet that's a pretty good indicator that I'm just about ready to start cultivating this to break up these plants that are to break up these weeds that are growing as you can see if I can get it to focus here see these little guys here all these little guys popping up from time to time you'll see that that's when you know you need to start taking care of these guys. I should have took care of them a little before that, but I haven't had a chance to get to it. So let's go get the EOX and we're gonna go ahead and try it out for the first time. It's been raining so much, I ain't really had a chance to get into it. So let's go ahead and get it out.
All right, everybody, so I switched over to the cultivator teeth, which are probably my favorite. So I'm going to show you the damage that we got done here and show you what it looks like, how much it crumbled up for me down here where I showed you earlier. Okay, so I tried not to let it dig real deep. You kind of have to hold up on it a little bit if you don't want it to dig in too deep if you got soft spots like right here is the softest spot i got because all that silt kind of washes down here so as you can see i did miss a spot here i might have to hit later actually a little patch that i missed here but if i dig down that's about inch to inch and a half deep right there it just doesn't get down too much more deep which is what i want that's exactly what i'm looking for not to get down too deep so as you can see, if I get out here and zoom out a little bit, everything looks fairly even, nice and cultivated and flat now. It's all cultivated up and got all them little weeds taken care of. So now that I got that done, that uh, them weeds get taken care of early. One of the way I can lower my weed seed banks is I cultivate this stuff before I get my vegetables in here. So I may not get my vegetables in for another two weeks. I will cultivate this once a week to help lower my weed seed bank because then weeds will keep popping up so I gotta take care of them. This is one of the quickest ways to do that. Get your plot ready a couple weeks early, start to cultivate it after a couple rains and it'll start to take care of some of the weeds. All right, so we got that done. We got it cultivated. And I got three full bars left on the batteries in the EOX, and I got two six amp hour batteries in it. They seem to they seem to do the job, and I haven't had them run out on me just yet. So we got this whole plot cultivated, which is a thousand square feet, and I think that this thing is going to be a huge help in the garden this year, guys. It all gets me all excited. And as I said, this is a great way to take care of weeds, cultivate early before you get your plants in the ground. We hope you liked the video, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and share it with your friends. That helps out the channel a lot, guys, and we appreciate the help. This is Not A Pro Gardener here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified every time I come out with a new video. Thanks for watching. What are you doing back here?